Hi, oh, yeah, we're up at the allotment today. Um, Graham bought me a couple of fruit trees for Valentine's Day. Um, so I've got a Victoria plum and uh, the other one is a pear, I'm not sure of the name. Um, but we've come up here today to pop those in the ground. Graham's going to put some posts in for me and eventually they're going to be hopefully like a grown in a, a cordon type way put some wires between the posts and um and pop them in like that and i've got some flowers that can go in as well well i hope they can go in these some of these are things that i've not grown before so i'm just gonna pop them in and hope for the best so i'll show you what we've got as well right so graham and his little helper are there they're gonna put the posts in for me so i'm gonna put them on the very edge of the of the plot of the new plot um so one in this corner, one in the middle somewhere here, and then one at the very end. And then we'll pop the, the two fruit trees in. So these are the fruit trees that Graham got me. Um, I think he got them in Tesco's. So there we go. This one is pear. Um, be friendly, lovely. The other plum, the other is plum. There you go. Oh no, it's opal. It's called. So, oh yeah, they were seven fifty each or two for twelve. Absolute bargain. So for me, better than a bunch of flowers because we can use them for a long, long time. And there's the wire. Now these wires, um, now we went to a local sort of farm store thinking it would be um, cheap there, but it was over £20 for just one of these reels of wire. I don't know how much is on there. Oh yeah, it says, bear with me, 25 metres. So it was over £20 for 25 metres. And we went to Trago Mills and bought it there. Absolute bargain. It was about five pounds each reel. So yeah, if you've got a Trago near you, definitely go and have a look for things like that. Um, because it's full of bargains, this Trago. I know that we've, we've got one uh, nearest to us is Newton Abbott in Devon. But I think there's also one in Falmouth, in Cornwall, and possibly St Austell area, I want to say, that kind of area. I'm not sure. But if you're lucky enough to be in Wales, um, they built a new one a few years ago in Merthyr Tydfil. So I should imagine that that one's pretty good as well. But I also got from Trago some Ridgeron Pink Jewel, because I just absolutely love Ridgeron. And I've got this here in GM as well, Platinum one. So I got those there. And this is my flowers. I also got these two packets of the white gladioli that I want to put on this big flower patch here. So this is going to be hopefully full of cut flowers. So I've not tried a big patch before for cut flowers, so I'm a bit excited about that. But other bits that I've been collecting, I've got this um, Gypsophilia, um, Liatris, I thought I had picked up more of that so I may go and get some more Liatris. I've got two of these Echinaceas, one of my favourite, favourite plants and I know that it's really good for the pollinators. Um, I've got one packet of Noreen's just for a bit of autumn colour. Then I've got two packs of um, Erangiums to go in. And then I've got these. These are growing like crazy in the back. I don't know if you can make that out there. But I've got these Alliums as well to go in. Um, what else? This isn't 
this isn't actually a wonderful uh, Toby Carvery meal in this bag. It's Jerusalem artichokes. So I want to get those in the ground somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where. And I was thinking they would go well in the flower patch because they give off these lovely yellow sort of sunflower type flowers. And then last but not least, I've got these wonderful, wonderful snake's head fritillaries look gorgeous absolutely love these i just thought that they would be nice along the border because they will come back and cheer me up year after year so i've laid out all the flowers and we've got fritillaries at the front the noreens and alliums behind then on to the liatris um, and then echinacea because it will go from the, the shortest at the, the front edge there and it will go back to taller gypsophilia and gladiolis and then at the back here it's going to be all the eryngiums and this little uh, pink erigeron which should take up quite a bit of space and then the Jerusalem artichokes at the back. So I've managed to get all the flowers in. They're all in and underground. That's that whole bed filled on the end. I haven't buried a Toby Carvery yet. <laughs> but that, that bag of um, Jerusalem artichokes is going to have to go in another day. I haven't got time to finish that off today. But we've just covered this patch here. This is going to be the potato patch. So just covered that in um, silage tarp for now, just to sort of help try and uh, get a head start and kill off some of the, the weeds and grass that's underneath it. Um, but we're not too worried about it being perfect at the moment. So that's there. Graham has managed to get these three posts in ready for the wires. We haven't got the bolts yet to go through um, these, but I think Graham's uh, going to make some in the week and then we'll get some wires sort of tensioned across it. Um, Nancy has very kindly mulched this lovely little red currant for me. This is the first thing to go in this little new allotment plot. And it hasn't even been in a week, I don't think. And it's um, it's doing really well. It's obviously enjoying life there. So yeah, Nancy's put some strolch all around it to mulch it in and uh, stop the weeds coming up because this compost, um, I don't know if you can see this compost here that's come out of my compost bins on the allotment has got quite a lot of weed seeds in it so it's all coming up this is the product Nancy's got here look she's got that I'll show you the front of the bag it's called mulch it's called strolch straw mulch and it's kind of um it's almost like it's been fermented it smells amazing and it when you water it in it sort of knits down and makes like a mat on top of the on top of the surface of the compost so it's great stuff thank you for modeling that nancy <laughs> so here we are the trees are in they getting a bit blown around already so they need the wires in at some point this week just to keep them steady and we can tie them in a bit then so that's how it looks now and uh, yeah that's it we're going home it's starting to get dark we're all a bit hungry <laughs> so she's really hungry <laughs> so we're gonna go home now so we'll see you in a video again soon bye bye